Hi, I'm Dan, and if you're new to homebrewing, so am I. Welcome to my adventures in homebrewing. This is the BrewTubers Online Brewers Club 2022 Hops Experiment, Hoppy Blonde Ale. Thanks to our sponsors, Imperial Yeast, Beer and Wine Hobby Homebrew Supply Store, Brewers Hardware, Five Star Chemicals, and Yakima Valley Hops. Get brewing. Hey everybody, welcome back to my adventures in home brewing and to part three, I believe, of the BrewTubers hop experiment. Forgive the background noise, it's uh, kind of cold here in Canada, so I've got uh, the heater going in the garage. But I'm fortunate enough to have one of my golfing buddies, Patty, with me yep. this week. How's it going, Patty? Good, thank you. Good, good. So, uh, for those of you guys who know, uh, I'm part of the, home, the YouTube group called um, the BrewTubers. We're an online homebrew club. Uh, we did a hop experiment in conjunction with uh, Yakima Valley and also Imperial Yeast. So, Yakima Valley provided us uh, a bunch of products to compare. Uh, two styles of hops, mosaic and also uh, citra. We got their incognito hop extract, uh, T90 hops, and also their version of what uh, Yakima Chief puts out called crowd hops. This is their version called Lupo Max. So have you ever had a beer with just straight citra hops in it before? Uh, just once, yeah. Yeah, what was it like? What did you think? Um, I like it. Like it's not. Uh, I don't find it very overpowering. It's the hops. Uh, yeah. No. So what kind of what kind of what do you kind of expect? Because this is just a straight blonde. Yeah. That we did with the uh, with the, with the sit with this for for with this yeah. one's going to be a citra hops and some centennials. So what kind of profiles do you think you're going to get? Um, maybe some aroma. Like, <laughs> am I going to smell anything? I, I hope yeah, I'm so. Gonna, I hope I hope to be not too much bitterness. Okay. Um, and yeah, I expect it to be pretty, pretty smooth, you know, being okay. blonde, not uh, nothing right. overpowering, right? All right. So uh, first up, I'm going to flip the camera around. Thank you. And yeah, you can see my computer. But right here, whoops, go, go that way, Danny. Uh, right here, we're going to have my buddy Mike's uh, Tran, Transam guy, uh, his version of our Hoppy Blondale. And he did this one with just the straight uh, T90 hops, I believe. Am I reading that right? No, he did it with Lupomax. So he did it with Lupomax. And uh, it's, uh, he's, Mike's a pretty cool guy. He's real, I don't know. Mike, you gotta correct me if I'm wrong if you're relatively new to the club or not. You've probably been in as long as I have, probably about a year or so now. So we're gonna pop this bad boy open. Uh, we're only looking at around well, 5.6%. So this is gonna be a nice one, I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's not overly hoppy, whatever else. So we'll see what happens. Let's That's have good. that bad boy and get this sucker yeah. going. All right, so when we do, what we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at head retention, we're gonna look at aroma and flavor, okay? So, nice color. That's a nice really color. Really nice color, yeah. That's a nice color. Oh, I took a little much. Here, you get, a little, you get what's left. All right. There we go, put that like that, there we go. And now, it's so clear. Yeah, so as you can see with Mike, whoop, I'm going the wrong way, here we go. With Mike, he's got really nice color to it, and Really good head retention. The carp looks really nice on it. So we're looking pretty good so far. Let's give it the old sniff test. Oop. So, oh, that's a yeah. kind of that kind of nice light kind of pine smell. Mm. What do you think? I what? love it. Yeah, it smells like. What are you getting? Uh, beer, I'd say I can't, I can't like, <laughs> I can't narrow it down more than that. But okay, to so me, it smells really appetizing. All right, so yeah, so golfing guys, we just think, taste it. What do you think? And we'll go like this. Oh yeah, that's a good one, Mike. Mm. That's nice. That's really really nice. The cool thing with like the, the Lupa Max, like I was telling you and uh, Chris earlier, is that. You don't need a lot of it to, to actually hit, hit the okay. home run with it. Um, the, coolest thing, the coolest thing about it is, is that with the Lupo Max style hops is that they try and take out as much of the vegetative matter out of it and leave as much of the lupulin, which is what gives you all the really nice aromas and flavors in it. And then to compress it into an even smaller uh, pellet. So you yeah. don't, don't need, you need as much, and you're getting as much out of that as possible, which is really, really nice. 
So, because it is a relatively expensive hop. Yeah. So, get more bang for your buck kind of money. Thing nice. with, thing with this, like if you're cooking, you're reducing something down into a really strong sauce or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's like a concentrate, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, what else do you think about it? I mean, a little bit of feedback here, Patty. The carbonation is nice, really yeah. great. Um, mm. Mm. It's very smooth. Like yeah. it's, uh, it just rolls off the tongue perfectly. So, to quote my buddy Matt Luluff, you know Matt. Yeah. He was here and we he helped me out with a couple other beers and he said, "I can't believe this is homemade beer, because it doesn't like you know when we were." Um, in like I'm gonna date myself in my younger days, um, you would get beer or homemade beer, and you like you could tell yeah. it was homemade beer, yeah, because it always had that funky aftertaste, yeah. or or didn't smell right, or something. It didn't else. have like, the right carbonation. Exactly. Didn't have a nice head. Yeah, and now it just seems that I'm finding that homebrewers are getting more and more experience and more and more talent because the more access you have to stuff or equipment, yeah. it makes it a little easier. And Mike, honestly, man, you've you've hit a home run, brother. I mean, I'm getting I'm getting lots uh, of kind of that resinous pine smell. I mean, definitely the bitter is there. I mean, I I think Citra is pretty much used in a lot of IPAs. Mm -hmm. This is almost bordering, uh, almost on IPA flavor. I'd say. Yeah, the bitterness, like after after you take a sip, you can kind of feel it. Yeah, yeah. So now. Mm. If I was to put a blonde, like a regular blonde, a commercial blonde, against like this. Like what one? Uh, let's see, Farmer's Daughter. Sure. Okay, and it's a local brewery out in uh, Calgary, Ontario, uh, which is, they did put out a beer called uh, Farmer's Daughter, and the brewery's called Whitewater. And what would you, th would you, would you be able to tell the difference between the two? I think so. Yeah? Yeah, having tasted this, uh, and I've had Farmer's Daughter many times, uh, Serve it on most of the golf courses around here. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, I think I'd be happier being served this in a restaurant. Absol absolutely. 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 So, out of 10, what do you think? I mean, for me, it's uh, eight and a half. Eight nine. and a half? Yeah. I, I would honestly give it really close to almost a 10. Just due to the fact that I feel carbonation is bang on. Uh, the aroma and the flavors there, and it's kind of, and it doesn't taste thin. So what I mean by thin is when you take that that mouth taste, that first mouthful, and you do get that taste, but you don't necessarily get that kind of alcohol flavor at the same time. It almost tastes very, very light. Mm -hmm. So I don't find it's thin. I think it's the right amount uh, for the ABV at five point six. Uh, I feel that it's the right amount of hop and everything else that my Mike has done. And dude, send me a case. Yeah, it's really good. And, uh, it's really good. And I'll hook you up. <laughs> All right. So thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it very much. I'm Dan. That's Pat. Patty. And keep your stick on the ice. Talk to you soon. <laughs>